This is Tanks Vlog, April 7th, 2019, wrapping up the day in sports. We'll discuss this shortly. But first, we have to start with the National College Basketball Semi-Final Final for Minneapolis Twin Cities. Here we go. We have a Final Four this year where only one team has ever won the NCAA tournament. So going in, we had a good chance that we could have a first-time champion. Well, after today, we are guaranteed of having a first-time champion. As the only team that had ever won an NCAA tournament pre previously was Michigan State. And they went down in bitter, bitter, bitter defeat. As they absolutely got smothered by Texas Tech. The Red Raiders who shut down Michigan, shut down Gonzaga, did the same to the Sparty. I guess the NCAA would have needed Zion Williams in this weekend to take out the uh, Red Raiders. What just brilliant defense all game long. They made, Michigan State did make a run in the second half, but once... Texas Tech got back on track. It was all over. So we're going to have Texas Tech, a team that never played in the Final Four before, play for the National Championship on Monday. And who will they be playing? Virginia. I mean, this was a very controversial way to end the game. To me, I, I don't know if you call that a foul. I, you know... Did, was Kyle Guy brushed by Samir Doughty? Yeah, he was. But was that one of those, to me, in, in the final seconds of a game, when you're taking a shot like that, that could win, decide the game, the only way you call a foul on that is if it's like blood is drawn. Or if it affects the uh, the shot. Doughty didn't put his hands out. He jumped to try to block the shot. And when they came down, they came down together. It was more of a chest bump than a foul than anything else. It was light contact at the most. And to me, you, on a light contact, you can't call that in that situation. And the refs earlier missed a double dribble by Virginia. So here we have Kyle Guy at the line. He hits two. Good overtime. He hits three. Virginia goes to the championship. And as coolly as possible, boom. Boom, boom, Kyle Guy made all three shots. And with just 0.6 seconds left, Auburn had no prayer. I mean, it's a tough way to lose. It's funny as Auburn fans reacted to the uh, missed shot, started celebrating. They were already d jumping up and... Uh, Doing the traditional partying at Toomer's Corner by the campus, so. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't. Just think you're jumping around, you're partying, all of a sudden someone goes, Hey, Ron! Y'all, they say we lost. Get the hell out of here. Nope. Damn son of a bitch, Yankees took damn tournament from us. Maybe it was the, uh, maybe the referee went to uh, Alabama. So anyway, it will be Virginia against Texas Tech on Monday. And right now, I like Texas Tech. Which is probably good news for Virginia. Because I haven't been 
shit in these predictions. I've been just as bad as Mike Francesa. Today was the first Saturday home game at City Field, and of course I was out there. And the giveaway today was a Todd Frazier WWE bobblehead. You got the WWE belt. I wonder which arm is the one that he's flexing his arms. Of course, he's on the disabled list with an arm injury, so doesn't that seem appropriate? Interesting that they have the uh, actual, like, rubber band ropes, rubber band, rubber band ropes. couple of uh, wrestlers before WrestleMania threw out the first uh, pitch. Of course, I really don't know who these guys are anymore. I haven't really watched wrestling regularly in 15 years. But Mets, I ended up actually moving my seat too, and I ended up sitting in the bar soul section. Got to see a lot of great people out there again, as usual. And what a day for the Mets. It was... The roller coaster of emotions. JD Davis proving some, uh, making Mickey Calloway look like a genius. Hitting two home runs as people were wondering why is JD Davis batting cleanup? Then you had a bomb from Michael Conforto. And then you had the bullpen falter again. Jerry's Familiar is reminding us why we hated Jerry's Familiar to begin with. Yep. So he gives up three runs. Mets are down. 5-3 in the eighth inning. But then once you know it, the big uh, the big bats who have been coming through from the beginning of spring training to the end to now. Pete Alonso. What a just what a just energizing player he is. And all those fans wanted him up last year, but of course Mets, nope, 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 Of course it wouldn't have done any good last year, but I am glad he made a team out of spring training and not wait for his service time to be no longer an issue. Thank you, Mets, for doing the right thing for a change. Then it was Robinson Cano, the very next batter. Boom! And the game was tied. And the Mets continued to rally, added a uh, run by a single by Keon Broxton. And then we bring in Edwin Diaz, who had a decent ninth inning, got this save. As the Mets beat the Nationals 6-5 rubber game Sunday. I have just one thing that bothers me about the win. And Major League Baseball has to change this somehow. The worst pitcher the Mets had today. Jerry's familiar. Who gave up two home runs. Who while pitched home a run that was on base. Who gave up three runs. A one and one third inning of work. Got the win. If that doesn't show you how meaningless the win stat has become. I don't know what does. You know, when a player hits into an, a double play and a run scores, they don't credit that batter with an RBI. Do we have to credit a relief pitcher with a win when he shits the bed? Sometimes I think they should have a team win and not have an individual win.
Yankees got their second straight win in Baltimore. Two home runs tonight from Aaron Judge, but the big blow was a three-run blast from Clint Frazier as they beat the Orioles 6-4. Tigers over the Royals 7-4. Pirates walked off against the Reds 6-5. So much for the Reds being improved. Off to a 1-7 start. Another year of baby... If you ever wondered, wondered whatever came of me. I'm living in last place in Cincinnati. Cincinnati Reds, S-T-I-N-K. Oh, the Cincinnati Reds really suck. It was the twin 6-2 winners over the Phillies. That was a good help for the Mets. A big three-run home run by Ed Win Rosario. It was the Mariners continuing their strong play as they beat the White Sox 9-2. Padres beat the Cardinals 6-4. Giants took out the Rays 6-4. Angels getting a couple of... Uh, games together now with uh, Mike Trout on a tear beat the Rangers 5 to 1 the Indians over the Blue Jays 7 to 2 Cubs halted their skid beating up the uh, Brewers in an absolute slugfest 14 to 8 Wade Miley had a strong outing as the Astros beat the A's 6 nothing it was the Marlins 4-2 winners in Atlanta. The Dodgers cl clobbered the Rockies 7-2. And the Boston Red Sox terrible start continued. As the Diamondbacks had a walk-off 5-4 win. NBA, just two games being played on Saturday night. One of them was very important for the Brooklyn Nets as they beat the Bucks in Milwaukee 133-128. Big night by D'Angelo Russell. Two games left, and they got to win every time they can get a chance to win. That playoff battle is tight as can be. Between them and the two teams from Florida. And anytime you can get a win, especially a win on the road against a quality team like the Bucks, it's important. Now it's the Pacers and Heat left. And the Nets are clearly in charge of their own destiny. It was the 76ers, 116-96 winners over the Bulls. And that was the only other game on... NBA Saturday night. NHL. NHL. A dreadful double season came mercifully to an end with a 4 3 win in Florida on a overtime goal by Travis Jajak. Panthers, we want to talk about a sad sack organization. That is a sad. It's almost like the Panthers don't even exist. Meanwhile, Florida's other team, the Tampa Bay Lightning, made NHL history, tying the record for most wins in a season with 62 as they doubled up the Bruins 6-3. So, Tampa Bay now has, where's the weight of their expectation as the playoffs get ready to begin? Blues beat the Canucks in a shootout 3-2. However, it was the Predators winning the division as they beat the Blackhawks 5-2. And the Jets will get the home ice advantage over the Blues as they beat the Coyotes 4-2. All three of those teams came into today within one point of each other.
Lacanedian are going home. But before they went home, they were able to beat the Maple Leafs in a shootout 6-5. to five. The Blue Jackets, who got the last playoff spot, beat the Senators 6-2. to two. It was the Sabres 7-1 winners over the Red Wings. The Hurricanes, those jerks, beat the Flyers 4-3. Ryan Strom scored in overtime as the Rangers ended their season with a win in Pittsburgh. Islanders will be hosting the Penguins in Game 1 sometime this week as they got the home ice in the first round with Robin Lanier getting a 29 save shutout as the Islanders beat the Capitals. It was the Stars... Getting the top wild card in the West with a 3 0 win over the Wild. The Oilers beat the Flames 3 1. And devastating news, devastating news. In the final game of the season, Connor McDavid suffers a knee injury. Don't know the extent of it, but obviously uh, that could uh, linger into next season. After a tough season for the Oilers. To lose your captain on the final game of the season is just the absolute worst punch in the gut you can imagine. It was the Kings 5-2 winners over the Knights. And the San Jose Sharks ended their season with a positive note, beating the Avalanche 5-2. Today's three stars are Ty Jerome of Virginia, Matt Mooney, who is on the money for Texas Tech, and Robin Lanier of the Islanders. Today's birthday shout-out goes to one of the best running backs in the NFL in his day, Tony Dorsett, who turned 65. This is a guy who was Heisman Trophy winner one year. The Cowboys got the second pick from the Seahawks, draft him, and he wins the Super Bowl the next. And we take a look back to 1984, when Jack Morris threw a no-hitter as part of the Detroit Tigers. Unbelievable great start. Check out the full story of Barstool Sports and Sports Encyclopedia when sports history lives. Good day.